What's up chum chitlins? I'm Quackers Co, and this is a fish fry for the spawning grounds. For our cookware, we have the Clash Blaster, the 52 Gal, the Flings of Roller, and the Heavy Splatling. Spawning Grounds always does really good with a lot of painting power, and unfortunately, we don't really have that much painting power with this composition. However, this composition can deal some damage, we just gotta be really specific about how we're causing that damage. With a close range blaster and the flings of roller, we should have plenty of lesser control power, and with the 52 gal and the heavy splatling, we actually have some damage at some distance. So it'll be super important to get as much of this map painted as possible. With the clash blaster, you can paint inside corner walls and mid walls really quickly, and the 52 gal and the heavy splatling can put some solid globs of paint on the wall. And the flingzo will be the only player that have it a little bit tough on painting these walls, but as long as you're rolling down the walls and using that vertical fling, you can get the walls painted pretty quickly but you may want to focus a little bit more on the turf since these other weapons just don't have that much turf painting power. One thing that'll make this composition just a little bit tougher spotting grounds is how awkward the fire rate is. So to maximize this composition's damage output, you gotta make sure that you're constantly dealing damage or at least go in to grab some eggs and get them ran to the basket. Our egg runners are the Clash Blaster and the 52 Gal, and those weapons also do a solid job on taking out stingers. So don't be afraid on getting down to the shoreline and playing aggressively for a moment, but just make sure that you have an exit strategy. That way, if you get your hands on one of those eggs, you can get out and get it to the basket and get back to causing damage. There can be some really good synergy between the Clash Blaster and the 52 Gal getting down to the shoreline. But you can't guarantee that's how the game's gonna play out. So make sure you keep an eye out for what your heavy splatling and flings of players are getting into. If that heavy can't get charged up, or the flings is just getting bounced around while rolling, they're not gonna be causing any damage and you're gonna get overran. So with it being so hard to paint the turf, make sure you're splatting those fish sticks as quick as possible. All the weapons can take them out from the ground level, but the flingza will have it the easiest with climbing the stick. And if you see a big shot show up, make sure you ping this way if you're going down to take it out. With this awkward fire rate of this composition, it'll be helpful to have some kind of support when you're going down there. Okay, let's talk about the occurrences here at spawning grounds. For a glowflies wave, we can actually make this wave pretty easy as long as we're handling it right. The Clash Blaster and the Flings of Roller can do some solid control on the Horde. And as long as the 52 Gal and the Heavy Splatling are hitting some shots on that Goldie on the way in, you won't get hit too hard when he arrives right there by the basket. Just be careful about ducking away to get some eggs and accidentally causing a snowball. One of the best ways that you can get those eggs in is to let them build up and then at a very strategic moment, wall hang for just a moment. That way your teammates can get those eggs in. But you just have to be careful about those Glowflies switching their target. Try to maintain that damage right there by the basket, that way you don't have to worry too much whenever it comes to a high tide glow flies. You'll be able to have it handled. Just be very strategic about how you're jumping away from your teammates and what you're trying to accomplish. For a griller's wave here at spawning grounds, we can have it pretty easy as long as we're leading that griller all the way to the basket. We've got three weapons that can do some fantastic small fry control. So just like with the glow flies wave, you can just set up with that flings a roller and slightly move the stick forward and you'll be able to cause a constant stream of damage to all those small fry coming in. And with the Clash Blaster, as long as you're aiming in between the small fry and the griller, you're able to cause damage to both targets, splatting this griller and dealing with the small fry really fast. Just make sure you put those eggs in really fast as well because that other griller is gonna be coming quick. And if the griller is coming from the grates, then you always need to remember to use that trick of jumping down to the area where we spawn, leading the griller down there first before getting back up to the platform, leading it back to the basket. A normal high tide on spawning grounds has the tendency of being pretty hectic, and with this awkward fire rate that we have, we're going to find some issues with it, but as long as we're constantly making sure that we're dealing damage to lessers, and keeping as many walls painted as we can, we'll be ready for those moments when things do get crazy, and we'll have at least enough paint out there, that way we're not getting cornered, and we can find ourselves just a little bit of safety. Don't feel bad to activate specials whenever you're on a high tide or a low tide. Treat these moments just like they're any other occurrence. As long as we can get to wave 3, we know that we can keep our pay grade. And if we're on a wave 3, activate those specials, clear the area, and make this map just that much easier to play. And you know we're going to get some priority targets there at the end of the grates. So try to make sure that you at least have one special for that moment where a fly fish or a stinger shows up and take it out fast. For a low tide of spawning grounds, we have about the same distance from the basket to where the enemies are spawning, however we don't have the walls to use as movement variables. At this moment, we need to use really smart luring to get enemies out of the way so that we can reach our priority targets at the shoreline. So it always helps to have as much turf painted. That way, when you need to lure an enemy like a steel eel away from the basket, you have that option instead of having to paint it to get that option. 
So at a certain point, you kind of want fish sticks to come in, that way you can have a better vantage point to take out some enemies. You gotta keep that tight focus on keeping the basket area clear, but if we're not taking out those shoreline targets, then we're going to find it really hard to deal any damage. So try to lure hard and splat fast. For a Quahog charge, all three weapons except for the heavy splatling have some pretty good mobility. But as it always goes, as long as two players are always in those turrets keeping those Quahogs at bay, it makes it that much easier for our egg runners to just put the eggs in. For Mothership Occurrence, since we have the Clash Blasters close range, try to keep it moving around, running the eggs as quick as possible. Our other weapons can deal some pretty good damage at a distance, and they could be worrying about taking out those Chinooks. And that Heavy Splatling has the easiest damage to deal at range, so it'll be best to post up, getting ready for that Mothership to attack. So be careful about how far you deviate away from the basket with this composition on a Mothership wave. We need to get those eggs in, and we need to be right there by the basket, that way when that Mothership gets close enough, we'll be ready to take it out. On a low tide mothership, we'll have to deal with more Chinooks landing behind the basket. So at this point, it'd be more helpful for everybody to stay in a quadrant of the low tide area. That way we can utilize our range on splatting Chinooks, and we'll also be close enough to the basket ready to take out that mothership. On a mudmouth occurrence, we all have about the same ability to take out any of the lessers that are going to be showing up. So just make sure that your response is really fast on taking out those mudmouths. That way we don't have to spend as much time dealing with the lessers, and we can spend more time dealing with the eggs. For a goldie seek at the grounds, it can be really confusing on which gusher to open up next to find that goldie. Just make sure you're opening up those gushers as quick as possible, because we have some valve locations that are just far enough that we'll want the ability to find that goldie quicker, that way we have more options for popping out some eggs. And thankfully, we have a blaster and a roller, so if you have one of the shooters, just try to make sure that your shots are actually connecting with that goldie. For a giant tornado, we have that same situation that we have with the mud mouths. All of our weapons have some pretty good lesser control, so just make sure that you're using that damage at certain points to make it a little bit easier to run these eggs. It's really fun to take that roller and just start rolling through the horde, but just be aware about when those lessers start dropping down on you. Try to start spinning in circles with that roller. There's more likely a chance that you'll get bumped out of the horde, giving you a higher chance of surviving. Spawning grounds always require some really hard work in order to get some clears. So let's show Mr. Grizz just how hard we can work. All right, let's get into the cookware. Our first cooking utensil is the Clash Blaster. The Clash Blaster can be a really fun weapon to use in Salmon Run. Since it has such a fast fire rate on that blast, we'll feel the want to get in and play this weapon aggressively, which is a good idea, but you have to make sure that you're keeping some distance between you and the enemies. There's a good chance that a small fry will sneak through, and as long as you have a little bit more range, there's a good chance that that blast will splat it. And you really need to hone in on just how far that range goes. It's a fantastic tool for taking out fish sticks from the ground level. You can also make really quick work of stingers if you go down to the shoreline. The only thing that the Clash Blaster really has a problem with are single target enemies with big health pools. So always try to make sure that you're pinging this way whenever you go down to the shoreline. It doesn't hurt to have some kind of support in case something's sneaking up on your backside. If you try to play the Clash Blaster with support in mind, try to utilize heights and ledges to your advantage. It's an easy way to cause some needle damage to enemies that are just a little far away, and it also helps just keeping you in a safe area at all times. But since the Clash is in the first slot, you have to make sure that you're getting in there and running those eggs. I give the Clash Blaster a wall paint score of 6 out of 10 here at Spawning Grounds. It has that ability to paint inside corner walls really easily, but there's a good chance that you won't handle the fire rate just right, and you'll find it hard to get some really precise blobs on the wall to use to your advantage. So try to be aware of how much of the wall is painted, and you might need to prepare a squid surge to get to the top of it. Our second cooking utensil is the 52 gal. The 52 gal deals a pretty good punch with every one of its shots, and it also puts a nice solid glob of paint on the wall, but we have to be careful about its slower fire rate. Just like the Clash Blaster, it doesn't hurt to put some distance between you and the enemies for that chance that one of your shots does not connect with an enemy and it sneaks up on your flank. So try to keep some good awareness about what's going on and where you need to be on this map. As one of the higher mobility weapons, you will also want to get down there and get some eggs in for the team. And again, just like the Clash Blaster, try to hone in on just how far your range is. The 52 gal can work fantastically on taking out fish sticks from the ground level, but you can also use that ink drop damage to cause some damage to slamolids without even seeing the target. But with this slow fire rate, it doesn't hurt to get on top of a slamolid or a fish stick and start causing some damage from that vantage point. And while you're up there, try to see what's spawning there at the shoreline. You do have that range that you can utilize in case you want to take out a stinger or to cause some damage to a big shot. I give the 52 gal a wall paint score of 6 out of 10 here at spawning grounds as well. Its globs of paint aren't as big as the Clash Blasters can be, but it's a little bit easier to paint more strips and directions on the walls, making it that much easier to reach the top. 
our third cooking utensil is the Flingza Roller. The Flingza Roller definitely has the most technicality of any weapon in this composition, and it can be kind of confusing on how to utilize it whenever you're in the middle of the match. But you can keep it a little bit more simple as long as you try to blend all of the playstyles into one. If you're dealing with a large horde of enemies, try to use a horizontal flick really close to the enemies, and then start using some roller damage trying to splat as many as you can. And you can easily repeat this in order to splat a large horde of enemies. But try to keep your ink in mind and be perceptive of what bosses are showing up. The Flingza has it the easiest to take out a steelhead. So if you're ready to do a vertical fling, break away from combat, do a vertical fling to take out that steelhead, grab one of his eggs, and then get back to doing your lesser control. That vertical fling is a fantastic way of dealing a bunch of damage to one specific target. You can also use these flicks and flings just like a slosher, allowing the ink to go above your enemies and then fall onto them, also causing damage. It's impressive how much damage you can cause with the rollers, so just make sure that you're not sleeping on it at all. Try to figure out ways of blending all these playstyles, and you'll find it much easier to play with a roller. That horizontal flake is also really good for taking out fish sticks. So if you want to take them out from the ground level, you gotta make sure that you're on a platform, and then you can take them out that way. But still, it doesn't hurt to climb up onto that fish stick, take it out from above, and then look for that really good moment where you can use a vertical fling to slam right down onto your enemies, giving some satisfying splats. I give the Flings of Roller a wall paint score of 6 out of 10 here at Spawning Grounds. Just like the other two weapons, our awkward fire rate can make it a little bit weird to paint onto some of these walls. But with that vertical fling of the Flingza, it can put a solid strip of paint on that wall, making it really easy to climb it and get to the top. Our last cooking utensil is the Heavy Splatling. The Heavy Splatling does take a little while to charge, but what's really nice is its range is available at any moment in that charge. So you need to be really careful about wasting any of the charge that you have. Definitely try to utilize this weapon with support in mind. Get yourself into spots where you can utilize the range of the heavy. You don't want to get yourself in there too aggressively, where you spend most of the match running away, so try to get yourself into a smart spot where you can start dealing some damage. The heavy will have it really easy with taking out any enemy that has a large health pool, so your awareness might be key on making these waves work. Be ready for a fast response onto taking out bosses or dealing with lessers, and we might be able to get this composition really working here at Spawning Grounds. I give the Heavy Splatling a wall paint score of 7 out of 10 here at the Spawning Grounds. You do need to charge the thing up before you can get that painting power, but its fire rate is just so fast that no matter which way you move your camera stick, it puts a solid line of paint no matter where you're aiming. The king that graces with his presence on this composition will be Horoboros. And for the easiest way to splat that Horoboros fast, you gotta make sure that you're dealing damage to that Booyah Bomb in his mouth, splatting it before he launches it off. And if you're not able to splat it before it gets launched off, it's helpful to know that some of that damage does remain on the Booyah Bomb. So keep an eye out for whenever he starts charging it up, and try to make sure that you're causing damage to it while it's good and small before it gets too big and he launches it. And since we have some awkward range with this composition, it'll be helpful to splat those bosses so that way you have eggs to toss at him. That Heavy and the 52 Gal can do some pretty good job on causing some damage to it, but you just gotta make sure that you're not getting tunnel vision. And for the Flings of Roller, look for those moments where you can get on a Slamalid or a Fish Stick and be able to cause some massive damage with its fling. The Clash Blaster will have it the hardest with causing damage to Boris's Booyah Bomb, so it may be more helpful to get down and cause damage to bosses and taking out lessers. And for using specials against Boris, not too many of the specials are really good for taking out that Booyah Bomb. So try to look for areas where you can utilize your special to clear the area of enemies, spawning some golden eggs, that way you can cause some more damage with your eggs. And the fish fry usually comes up before the stage rotation, so if you want to catch these updates when they're hot and fresh, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want other fellow Grizzco employees to receive these tips, make sure you like and share the video. Bye bye To give the fish fry an algorithm boost, just comment what your favorite or least favorite weapon is of this composition. I think I'm going to have to give mine to the Clash Blaster. I don't often see this weapon in Salmon Run, so whenever I do, I get really pumped to use it. It's a fun weapon for me to use, even if I play it way too aggressively and get myself cornered, but gosh, at least I had fun doing it. Alrighty guys, bye bye